All right, so this is the last topic in probability that we're going to look at, uh, and it's probably one of the more difficult ones. It can be pretty confusing, um, I'm not going to lie. So try and watch the videos a few times. Uh, it is quite important because a lot of the time they're going to ask difficult questions. They don't always ask easy questions uh, or kind of simple, straightforward questions like you might have seen in the other videos. So sometimes it's called the box method or sometimes the hangman method. Uh, it's used if there are lots of restrictions, and we'll look at an example here to show you what it is. So you have the letters or the numbers, two, five, seven, and eight. Um, and it's asking you to do a few different things with that list or sequence of numbers. So it says, how many four digit numbers can you make with those letters? Um, how many of those numbers are over 5,000? And how many of those numbers are odd? So it's three separate restrictions. Um, so I'll scroll down to make some space. So two, five, seven, eight, we have four numbers. And how many four digit uh, numbers can we make with those? So the answer to that will just be four factorial. That's how many ways we can arrange two, five, seven, and eight to get different numbers, basically. So four factorial is just um, 24 is the answer for that one. So that's kind of straightforward. The next two ones won't be as straightforward. So number two, how many of those numbers are over 5,000? So unless we count all 24 different orders and then count which, which of them are over 5,000, it's sort of difficult to do this um, to do this question. So one way of doing it is using the box method. So you draw four boxes like this, and then each of them are going to be multiplied by each other. So each of these boxes kind of represents uh, one of the digits, and it represents not one of the digits, but how many choices we have. So I'll say that. Um, so I'll say box is how many choices we have okay so the first the first box is how many choices we have for the first digit second box is how many uh, choices we have for the second digit and so on and um, and then the way we fill them in is normally from left to right okay uh, you can fill them in from right sometimes you have to start on the right side so for the uh, last example we'll have to start on the right side I'll show you that then but generally we fill them in from left to right so the main idea is in this first box here how many options do we have that we can fill it in? If there are no restrictions, we could put any number in it. There's four different numbers, so the answer would be four. We have four choices of number to put in here, but in this case, there is a restriction. The question is, how many of those numbers are over 5,000? So for one of the numbers to be over 5,000, then it has to either start with five, seven, or eight, because if it starts with a two, it's always gonna be lower than 5,000. If it starts with any of those, it's always gonna be higher than 5,000, if it's a four-digit number. So we'll put three in here because there are three options uh, of the four that we can choose from, okay? Um, so the next thing to do is then to fill in the rest of the boxes. So that's our restriction covered. No matter what goes in after here, um, the number will be over 5,000. So even though I have a three written here, only one digit is actually in the box. So there, there are three options we can put in it, but once we, say, once we fill this box, there's only one digit in it and we have three digits left to fill the rest of them. So there we have three choices to fill this box because say for example the five went in, then we can either have seven, two, or eight, or say for example the seven went in, we have two, five, or eight. So it's not, we're not saying that any of these are in the box, but there are three choices left. Now there's gonna be only, um, there's, a, so there's a digit in this box and there's a digit in this box. There's only two left for this box and then one left for the final box. So the idea is we multiply three by three, by two, by one, and then that will give us the answer of how many of those numbers are over 5,000, um, and the answer for that is 12 different numbers are over 5,000. So 12 of them are gonna be over 5,000. Nope, sorry, uh, I can't do basic maths, I guess. Uh, 18 of them are over 5,000, sorry, my bad. Um, so hopefully that makes sense, hopefully I explained it well enough, or we'll do it again with uh, part three and maybe rewatch the video. It is a little bit hard to wrap your head around, but it is important that you do. Uh, just understand how to use this box method to solve different questions. So I'll scroll down here to make space for part three. I'll go green. So again, how many of those numbers are odd? So I'm gonna draw four boxes again. Boxes may not be great, but... And then I multiply in between each one. And the idea is each box represents how many choices we have. So how many of these numbers are odd? The numbers we have are two, five, seven, and eight. So for a number to be odd, it has to end with an odd number. So that means it has to end with either five or seven. So for example, I'll go purple. The last digit here 
has to be either a five or a seven. So that means we have two options. So I'm going to put two in there. Does that make sense? So we have two options odd. So that means it's either a five or a seven. So that means that's why we have uh, the two in there. Yeah, Ho hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then after that, we can go to the left. So sometimes you have to start at the end, but then we'd go from left to right after that, okay? So the next digit, it doesn't matter what the rest of the digits are, there's no more restrictions. Uh, and how many options do we have to put into this first one here? So since there's gonna be one digit in here, so I know there's a two in the box, but only one digit is actually being used um, because there can't be two digits as the last digit, there's only going to be one in each space. Uh, so there are, we have three options left. So say for example, the seven got chosen, we have either two, five or eight, or say for example, the five got chosen as the last one, we either have two, seven or eight. So those are the two options. So uh, there's always gonna be three options left here. So we have three in the first box. And then after that, we have a digit here, a digit in the first box, a digit in the last box. So that means we have only have two uh, spaces left or two options left. And then the last one, we're gonna put one. So the answer then is gonna be three by two by one by two. And if we multiply that out, we're gonna get 12 as our final answer. Um, so again, I guess that's sort of the best I can explain it. We'll, I'll do another example in the next video and hopefully it will help uh, prove it, kind of help, I guess, uh, help explain it a little bit better. But that is the best I can think to really explain it. It's a little bit difficult. Um, watch it one or two times and give a few examples a shot and hopefully it'll, it'll make sense. Um, yeah, that's it for this video. Just kind of the introducing the box method. In the next video, we're gonna do a harder example. Um, and yeah, hopefully it's all good. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.